We had almost five hours discussion about mechanisms to stop ongoing violence and deterring Russian invasion, as well as about massive assistance programs for Georgia from the United States in order to start immediate rebuild, immediate assistance, and immediate normalization of life in my badly damaged country. As we speak now, significant part of territories of Georgia remain under foreign military occupation. You might have heard reports that some Russian APCs were dislocated to move to closer to the capital and on halfway between Gori and Tbilisi. Well, I still, before focusing on today's ceasefire agreement, I still would like to draw your attention to the events that preceded the whole invasion and occupation. Well, when, when in April in Bucharest, Georgia was the United Membership Action Plan by some members of NATO, I warned Western media at that stage that it was asking for trouble. Not only they denied us membership action plan, but they specifically told the world that they are denying Georgia membership action plan because of existing territorial conflicts in Georgia, basically inviting the trouble. And I told the world this is the worst thing one could say to, to the Russians, that there will be no NATO until there is conflicts, and more there are conflicts, less there will be of the NATO. And immediately after April, immediately after Bucharest, and I can tell you now that Russians perceived Bucharest, and I mentioned it, and then some of the Western commentators made fun of me, saying that, oh, it, this hot-headed sack, I should have said this rubbish again. I told them Russia perceives it as new Munich. Bucharest was perceived by them as New Munich. And what happened was that immediately they started to build up an infrastructure in Abkhazia. Immediately they started to bring in railway troops to, bring, to build railway in depopulated, ethnically cleansed areas of Abkhazia, cynically claiming that they are doing this for humanitarian purposes. And I shouted to the world, this is for to bring in tanks. They built tank bases all over Abkhazia and in South Ossetia in place of Java without bringing in tanks yet. We told the world this is about starting an invasion. They started to bring in lots of military specialists, reconnaissance. They brought in paratroopers. Again, we screamed to the world, stop it. And there were some statements from Washington, but I have to tell you that for most of the European countries, which no, some remarkable exceptions. There was pretty muted and quiet reaction to all this. And the Russians were carefully watching this reaction. They were doing step by step. First some infrastructure, then some additional troops, then some legal acts, then again infrastructure, again some intrusion, and wait watching carefully what Europeans have to say. Watching carefully what would be the counter reaction of the international community. And it really did not follow. And Madam Secretary, as we were standing here last time, a few weeks ago, there was intrusion of, the Georgian, of Russian planes into Georgian airspace, just exactly in the lines of South Ossetia. And you remember, as well as I do, that then we downplayed it. I downplayed it myself. I said, well, they are here just to salute Secretary Rice. And normally in the past, Russians would deny that. But that time they said, yes, this is us. We flew there, implying that there was intent to bomb against Georgians. And again, they watched the European reactions. No European country said anything about it. So who invited the trouble here? Who invited this arrogance here? Who invited the, these innocent deaths here? 
who is not only those people who perpetrate them are responsible, but also those people who fail to stop them. And who is trying now to look for every excuse, saying, oh, you know, Georgia's might have started it. Excuse me. 1,200 tanks came into Georgia within a few hours. There is no way you can mobilize those tanks in such a fast period unless you were ready. There were Russian pensioners taken off the streets of Moscow to fly the planes several days before the invasion. There was no way if they were not preparing invasion, why would they call back the pensioners? There were all these movements on the ground all around the place. You know when it all started? I want the world to know. I was gone for holidays. My defense minister was gone for holidays. When the thing started, I had to rush back, cut my holiday short. When the tensions started to raise, I had to summon back my, our defense minister. But most of our officials were gone. Most of the decision makers I tried to reach were gone for vacations. It was brilliantly selected timing for this intervention. And unfortunately today we are looking evil directly in the eye. And today this evil is very strong, very nasty, and very dangerous for everybody, not only for us. That is what we learned. But together this can be and will be only the first chapter. Let us write the next chapters to get together and write this historic new chapter of the world for the world. We will rebuild. We want them out. I want the world to know. Never ever will Georgia reconcile with occupation of even one square kilometer of its sovereign territory.